learn about the off-grid lifestyle and to be inspired to live your dreams, click subscribe so you don't miss anything. Hit the bell notification. So once again, I am on my porch of my brand new home that I built. It's a tiny home, tiny house. It's brand new. And, and when you really begin to think about what that means, it really starts to hit home and, and the pride just starts to explode. It's just overwhelming how, how much, how happy I am. I keep asking Carolyn, do you love it? Do you love it? And she says, yes, of course, but she is not convincing me that she loves it. Come on, do you realize I built this? I, I know she loves it, that's not the point. Her enthusiasm isn't fulfilling my need to say, man, wow. I know I'm not explaining it right. It makes me sound like a narcissist and I'm not trying to be a narcissist. I'm just overjoyed about it. It's just, it's, it's an incredible accomplishment in my mind. Now, we were just having a conversation about, could it be bigger? And, and the answer is no, it couldn't have been bigger for several reasons. One, I mean, yeah, we could have spent more money and, and made it bigger. You know, we spent $500 a month, said that many times, but there's a point to me saying it again. We treated it like rent. And, and there's a lot of people who think that I'm, I'm being stingy with money. You can afford to do more. But that wasn't the point. We did not want to hurt our financial future. And we still got a house. So in a year, we've been on this property for a year. We bought the property, $4,200. And I don't think really people really understand how, how much money we're talking that we spent without credit. So to, to say, well, you're just being stingy and selfish and you, know, you need to hurry up and all that. I, I don't think it sinks in that we built a house on a piece of property for just over $9,000, our little cabin in the woods. It's finished, and so th there's an important point to be made that anybody can do this. I am not special. I'm not talented. I'm not a carpenter. You know, I've, I've done some tinkering in my life, just little odds and end things, but I've never actually got anything to, to live in and to be functional for daily life. But here it is, a functional building that's keeping the rain out. It's very well insulated, keeping us very warm. I installed a wood stove. Now for those who have actually worked with people who install wood stoves, that may not be a big deal to you. But to me, look at that. There's a chimney coming out of the roof and it works. That's a big accomplishment for me. So no, I'm not special. It was just a lot of studying and work and coming up here daily and being motivated and driven. And so anybody can do it. Anybody can be debt free. And I, I know what people say, oh, you can't do it because of whatever. I did it with a twisted ankle. So bad that I couldn't walk. I, I twisted my ankle twice during this whole project and I still was able to muddle through, broken my toe. You may not be able to do as much per day as I did, but you can do it. The only reason you can't do it, I'm telling you this, is because you say you can't do it. You can do anything you set your mind to, and that's it, that's it, that's the mindset. Carolyn has a debilitating back injury. She can barely stand up for more than 10 minutes at a time. Then she's gotta sit down. And she can only sit down for maybe 10 minutes at a time. Then she's gotta stand up. She does not take medication uh, any, of any type, she deals with the pain and just situates herself so she can do it. And she has diligently worked on the interior of the house for weeks now with this debilitating pain. So it can be done, but you gotta set your mind to it. One of the things that I struggle with, of course, is being on YouTube while building this. But I, I don't think it's just a YouTube thing. I think that people are driven to tell other people that things aren't going to work. And so being on YouTube, it's amplified by, well, in my case, 40,000 subscribers. You may have a family member or a friend or a neighbor. Oh, that's not gonna work. Can't do it that way. I mean, I've had it in my life. Now imagine 15,000 people watching my videos. And out of that, I get probably on a daily basis, 50 or 60 people telling me what I can't do. 
not going to work. You're doing it wrong. You're stupid. You're an idiot. All the things that really bring down your confidence level. I see a lot of people not achieve their dreams because people tell them they can't achieve their dreams. And so it's perpetuated. Oh, I can't do it. I, well, why can't you do it? Oh, I got this problem and that problem. Well, who told you you got that problem and that problem? Well, you know, Joe down the road said I can't do it this way. And so everything's a can't and negative and negative and negative and negative. And before you know it, you're not doing it because it's just a big negative problem. The reason I'm trying to bring up the amount of negativity I get each day, because it really did try to bring me down. It was hard to stay positive when you had so much negativity. But I see people getting drugged down all the time by the negativity around their life. So the first thing you got to do is say, okay, I can do it. I don't want to listen to anybody. I, that is a big complaint I have from a lot of my subscribers is I don't, I don't listen to them. I don't listen to what they're telling me because they got a better idea. I need to listen. They've got experience. I need to listen. They've got uh, 40 years of doing something on the job. I need to listen. But if I'd have listened to all the negativity telling me what I can't do, I wouldn't have done it because there was things they were telling me to do I didn't know how to do or did, couldn't afford to do. I just had to ignore it all and just, and so I want to give you some examples of all the negative input. And I know, I know as soon as I start to point these things out, oh my goodness, yeah, Rob, you shouldn't have done it that way. You should have done it the other way. Even though it's standing up, I'm quite confident it will stand the 20 years I've expected it to stand with some maintenance, which is key. You got to maintain your home. It'll do fine. So the first thing was the floor. For very first thing was the floor. This, as you know, was a mobile home falling down. And if you go back to the last year's videos in my channel, you will see that the mobile home was falling down. Carolyn and I took it all apart, cleaned it all up. And there was two by fours on the mobile home frame on the trailer going across for the floor. They didn't use two by sixes or two by eights or two by tens for the floor. They used two by fours. So what did I do? Ah, why not just use the two by fours? They were still good two by fours. And so I made an extra beam in the center of this. Oh, Rob, you're repeating yourself. Well, of course I'm repeating myself because so many people told me I couldn't do it and I'm trying to tell you, you can do it. So you got the steel beam here and you got a steel beam over here. You got a bunch of little steel beams going across. So I ran a two by six beam down the center of the floor and I said, so that now I have an extra beam than what the mobile home had. And I used two by fours to lay the floor. Rob, that's never gonna work. It won't last a week. You won't be able to put furniture in it. Okay, what furniture am I putting in it? Well, what about the wood stove? The wood stove is gonna weigh four or five, 600 pounds. The wood stove is sitting right in this corner right here. You can see the, the intake vent. So it's right over here, which means it's sitting on a steel beam. So I don't need a two by 10, but for months, people were telling me it's never gonna work. Well, then I started building the walls. And the first thing they, they beat me up on was, you don't have headers on these walls over here. So this window does not have a header on it at all. The, the, the thing's gonna fall down, Rob. It's gonna fall down, you'll never be able to open that window. As soon as you put a roof on, it's not gonna open up. As soon as you get a snowfall, it's not gonna open it up. You'll see, I use trusses. Trusses are designed to be self-supportive. So there is absolutely no weight on that window. There's none. And you, people will argue with me and argue, well, of course there's weight on it. You got the roof for the weight. When you use a truss, if you have a truss running through the center of the house, why do we say that that is fine? But then when you put a same truss on the end of the wall, oh my gosh, that, that truss there is gonna take all the weight of the house. It's not true. It, 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 there is no weight on that window, none. I did do a proper header here, but I was trying to reduce costs. In an economy where lumber prices are through the roof, I was trying to reduce cost everywhere I could. So I would study and study and study, trying to figure out where can I reduce the cost? Do I really need a header over there? The first 10 
videos and blogs and vlogs and this old house all said I didn't need a header on that wall, on the gable wall, if you're using trusses. Speaking of trusses, I made trusses out of two by fours. Oh my gosh, you can't make a truss out of two by four. It's got to be a two by six. There is absolutely no information saying it has to be a two by six for a 12 foot building, 12 foot wide. Here's the thing was so interesting about the trusses. I bought the design offline from a company that sells truss designs. So trying to stay in the mindset that you can do things, you can do it inexpensively, and you can have your dream. Just ignore everybody. And here's the thing I'm gonna to say today. I hope I can inspire you to ignore the people that say you can't do something because you can do anything you want as long as you think you can do it. Thanks for watching.